apart. What? <laughs>
know whose place is this. It's mine. Do you live here? Okay. Yeah. Okay. She's a friend of what's her name? Do you know her name? Jessica Kyholtz. Okay. Do you have any information for her parents or her parents know she's here? I don't, I don't know. I assume they know she's here. Do you know who the, her parents are? Yeah. Do you have any access to like a phone number or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I do. Okay. What's her name's and her number? Well, I don't have my phone on. Do you know what happened with the young lady? I took her bottle away. So I saw she was chugging vodka and I took it away. But I think, it, I don't know. All right, everything's tight off. She's and all these up. kids here, do you, I know them yours. One of them. pad right over here. The well, rest are just all friends that was here. Okay, have a party. Okay. Yeah. One at a time away from the group. Seventeen. I want you to stand over here, please. Captain. All right. Right there. All right. Listen up. I'm going to advise everybody of their rights real quick. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in court of law. 
You have the right to talk to your lawyer to have him or her present while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand your rights? Do you understand your rights? Do you understand your rights? Do you guys understand your rights? I'm Captain Chair from the Sheriff's Office. I know this is a very dramatic time for you right now. Um, so excuse the brashness of this, but I need to get things going. The medics over here tend to this young lady right now. So well, before this officer goes any farther, I'm going to advise you of your grant rights. Do you understand that? Okay. Okay. All right. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk to the lawyer to have him or present while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. You can decide any time that to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand your rights as I stated to you? Yes. Okay, very good. All right, continue. And I, I, so you were aware that they were all drinking alcohol underage? Yeah, I, I didn't realize it was you know, a problem because so right? I wasn't, I didn't think, I didn't know. Okay. You I know the legal age of alcohol consumption in the United States? In the state of Missouri? Yeah. Okay, what is it? 21. Okay, and, and any of these children on over the age of 21? No. So you, you willingly knew that they were drinking underage or breaking the law and you were still taking that? Correct? young lady is uh, potentially deceased uh, because of it. Alright ma'am, go ahead and step out.
On behalf of the family, I want to thank you for coming and celebrating the life of a young lady, Jessica, who left us way too soon. On Wednesday, March 31st, 2021, Jessica Kyholz, loving daughter, granddaughter, sister, cousin, and friend, passed away due to binge drinking alcohol poisoning at the age of 17. Jessica was born on July 8, 2003, in Jefferson City, Missouri, to Lenny and Nan Kyholz. Jessica leaves behind both parents a sister, cousins, aunts, grandparents, and friends. Jessica was very active in her softball and baseball teams. She not only played for her school team, but also a traveling team for both softball and basketball. Through softball, Jessica won multiple awards, including highest fielding percentage, academic all-state, all-district team, all-conference second team, all region second team, and was voted most valuable player by her teammates. Jessica was very active in her school organizations. She was a member of Athletic Club, CYO, Trend SAD, National Honor Society, and FFA, where she held multiple leadership roles. Jessica was a very active member of FFA and enjoyed showing steers at the county fair every year. Jessica spent many hours working on the family farm with her parents. She grew up helping her mom around the office and the local veterinarian clinic. Jessica was always there to help any way, anyone that asked for help. Jessica, where do I even start? You're a once in a lifetime kind of friend, the girl whose smile lights up the room. You cared about everyone surrounding you and always did your best to please people, even if it meant hurting yourself. Never imagined this day coming so soon. Looking back at that night makes me regret every decision that led up to it. How could I be such an awful friend to not realize you were needing help? You were suffering and we didn't see it. You were so innocent and not in a bad way. You did what was best for yourself and you never let peer pressure get in the way. You weren't interested in the party life and I knew how important it was for you to stay that way. Even though you felt that way, you still never judged those who didn't make the same decisions as you. We all let you down that night, Jess. We let your family down, and we let our families down. What happened the night she passed does not represent the Jessica we have come to know and love. Jessica is still the kind of person I need in my life. She kept me level-headed and never failed to reach out to me when I needed help. We spent nights driving around and talking about all of life's biggest problems, crying, laughing, yelling, whatever it was. She was my safe place. I'm so proud of her and all of her accomplishments. She has earned well-deserved scholarships and was going to go to college for softball, a dream we had since we were little kids. Jessica brought our newly founded friend group together. Through all the drama and craziness of senior year, she is the one who made sure we still had each other. This was supposed to be our summer, Jess. What happened? Why did you have to leave us so soon? I would do anything to get one more Jeep ride with you. I hope you find peace and happiness and look down over us. I promise to do everything in my power to not let you down again. No, I don't know what I'll do without my best friend. But what I do know is that because of Jessica Kyholtz, I will be a better person. This has been a terribly painful day for us. We were supposed to be planning prom and graduation and moving off to college. Nothing could have prepared us for this. The large crowd present here today has proved that Jessica was well liked and was a gift to her family. Lenny and I were privileged that God entrusted us with her care for almost 18 years. Most of you have known Jessica for a while as a teammate, a classmate, and a friend. But as her mother, I've had the blessing of knowing her for longer than anyone. I 
carried her for nine months. And when she was born on her dad's birthday, July 8th, 2003, it was the best birthday gift you could have asked for. Her birth, like most things about her, was on her terms. After a total of about 30 minutes in labor, she arrived. She was determined to be different from her sister from the first moment. Most of you would acknowledge that she could be a little sassy and a little stubborn. That spirit was part of her charm and part of what made her so special. And also what made her, helped her succeed. In a lot of ways, she was probably like most teenage girls. She was terrified of wearing the wrong clothes or having messy hair. She loved hanging out with her friends. She loved Hallmark movies. And she loved country music. Especially Morgan Wallen and Cody Johnson. I especially cherish my video of her teaching her dad to get up in the living room. Despite the circumstances surrounding her death, Jessica was a good kid. You could find her most Saturday evening sitting in the church pew at St. George with her dad, sister, and I. After which we'd go out to eat. She would have wanted me to share with you a Bible verse. I have chosen Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 32. 31 through 33. For no one is cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief taking him. A Texas vacation was on her bucket list, and we were scheduled to check it off this summer. She laughingly shared her dream of sitting in the stands at a Texas rodeo and having a handsome cowboy toss her his cowboy hat from the arena, the beginning of her own farm girl version of Hallmark movie. I could go on reminiscing and sharing funny stories about her for a long time. We would cherish those forever. Her bucket list will go incomplete. Her Hallmark story never written. Tomorrow will be just another day. You might remember her with sadness every once in a while when a memory reminds you of her. But for some of us, it will be the beginning of endless days trying to figure out how to go on without her. Jessica, I've known you to be a lot of things. A best friend, BFF, a crush, and even an enemy at one point. When you moved to Lynn High School, I was nervous you would hate me like you did at St. George. But luckily for me, that was not the case. When I look back at these last four years of high school, I can't think of a day that went by that I didn't want to see my best friend smile. All the road trips, all the phone calls, the weddings, and the couple slow dances we've had together make me wish I had more time with you. Jessica, you have the purest soul of anyone I know. You hardly complained, even if it was over a 15-page report. You were always smiling and being that little light in the dark for everyone that was lucky enough to see you that day. You've helped me through the worst parts of my life and never, ever judged me. I'm going to miss everything about you, Jessica. The hugs after our games, win or losses, the texts and calls just to randomly make sure we were both doing okay. Reading your hair in the middle of class because you couldn't believe that I knew how to do that. The looks we give each other in class and break into laughter just because we both feel so stupid and funny. And most of all, I'm going to miss being able to look into the stands and always know that my number one supporter is going to be there. I wish I would have done something different so we wouldn't be here right now. Everyone knows that this is not a representation of who you were or what you were living for. You fought your entire life to play, a so play softball in college and just you just made that dream come true. I believe the saying goes, only the good ones die young. And man, does that hurt right now, because I know it's true. If everyone in this world was half as nice and loving as you are, 
it would be a lot better place. Heaven gained an angel this week. And we remember you every single day in our hearts and in our minds and in our friends. You will be a part of each and every one of our lives in a way we wish never was possible. I'm going to think about you every day, Jessica. What I should have done differently, what I should have said and didn't. I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you when you needed me the most. Please watch over us while you're gone until we see each other again. Let's hope you can drive a Jeep with its top off in heaven so I can finally get that road trip we've always talked about. Rest easy, Marvel McQueen. As teachers, our number one job is to prepare you for your future. The future for that, each and every one of you, is without a doubt bright and full of opportunity. And how we go about preparing you to be adults is to treat you as one and expect you to behave as such. We set high standards and expect you to act like the adults that we hope that you can be. And by doing so, we hope we can develop you into successful and mature individuals by the time you walk across that stage and accept your diploma. As teachers, we hope that we have instilled a sense of self-respect and maturity that you can only receive from us. We aren't your parents, and you aren't our children. Though we love each and every one of you, the fact of the matter is that we teach and care differently, and that is important. We can be stern when a parent might need a step back, or we can give a hug when a parent might want to bop you upside the head. However, as we expect you to act like adults, the line between adolescence and adulthood becomes blurred. If I had a dollar for every time I heard a student say they were old enough to do what they want, I'd be able to retire right now. And you see, that's the problem I hope to correct. As much as you want to be, a, be an adult right now, the simple fact is you're not. And I don't mean that as a slight. It's just scientific truth. You're all bright. And trust me, there are plenty of adults far less mature than you. But that's not the problem. The real issue is the physical and emotional harm underage drinking does to the high schooler's brain. Do any of you know at what age your brain is fully developed, whenever it's finished growing? It's not 18. It's not 21. It's 24. That's right. Up to and through college, your brain is still developing and molding itself based on your experiences. And the continued use of alcohol during this time, especially as a teen, changes your brain chemistry drastically. Your grades can suffer. Attendance lowers. You could even develop anger issues as well as disrupt your physical and sexual development. But that's not all. You're more likely to become physically and sexually abusive. Or on the other side of the coin, you're more likely to be physically or sexually abused. As terrible as all that sounds, and believe me, it sounds awful, and I'm not trying to make light of any of those circumstances, it does get worse. You're more likely to commit suicide or murder with the continued use of alcohol as a teen. The decisions you make today can affect more than just tomorrow. They can even affect more than just you. So I ask you this. Before you go out and make the decision to drink, think about your future, your friends, your family. Think about how different it might be if you don't meet your goals. Think about what your friends and family might look like if you're not there. Today's decisions determine tomorrow's outcomes. Choose wisely, be safe, and watch out for each other. Thank you. As educators, it is always our goal to provide a good role model for every student. It's always our goal to protect those kids. 
to protect every student going through our school. The, the old saying goes, it takes a village. So this goes to more than just an education. This goes to the adults of the community. It goes to the adults that provide the role models, the parents. It goes to everybody. This affects so much more than just those people in this room. It affects so much more than just Jessica's friends, Jessica's parents, Jessica's family. It affects the entire community. It takes a community to raise a child, to raise a teenager. It's so much deeper than the consequences for providing alcohol. It hurts so much more than just a fine, jail time, prison time. It's a lot more than just what's on paper. It hurts a lot deeper to those people around Jessica, to around teenagers that are providing alcohol. So before we go further, and as we continue to raise our teenagers, to raise our children, to raise our students, remember what kind of role model you are as adults. Remember, it's more than just being a friend. It's more than just being a parent. You're a role model for our children as they grow, as they learn, as they get into college, as they get into adults, as they get married, have a family of their own someday. It's so much more than just what we can provide as educators. It takes a village. Thank you. Yeah.